These real life figures were memorable because they were straight up psychotic. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 insane rulers in history. I have existed from the morning of the world, and I shall exist until the last star falls from the night. For this list, we're ranking some of the most violent, mentally unstable, and outright selfish royal leaders in history. We're excluding non-royal dictators such as Soviet leader Joseph Stalin and Nazi Fuhrer Adolf Hitler, as well as democratically elected politicians. When the older Jahrgänge noch wanken werden könnten, die Jugend ist uns verschrieben und verfallen mit Leib und but don't forget to check out our other lists of the top 10 conquerors and top 10 ruthless dictators if you're looking for that kind of thing. Number 10. Farouk I of Egypt Farouk I may have the distinction of being the last royal leader of Egypt, however his achievements were lackluster and his personal behavior was dislikable. Farouk was a glutton, reportedly eating 600 oysters weekly, so it should come as no surprise he eventually weighed close to 300 pounds. While being fat isn't a crime, stealing the watch off of Prime Minister Winston Churchill sure is. Farouk's kleptomania pales in comparison to what he did when he had nightmares about lions, though. He went to his local zoo and shot two dead in their cage. Number 9. Ivan IV of Russia Ivan the Terrible waged a 40-year war on his own country, Russia. Thousands were slaughtered. Most commonly known as Ivan the Terrible, it's probably not surprising that Ivan Vasilyevich is regarded as Russia's greatest and most terrifying leader. This Tsar united Muscovite Russia, ruthlessly expanded Russia east to turn it into an empire, and is considered the father of modern Russia. This is a, an, an evil man indulging his, uh, his, his sadistic tendencies. This aside, Ivan was terribly paranoid. He famously established the secret police known as the Aprichnik, which antagonized and mass-executed political dissidents. They were like devils. They killed and they raped and they plundered everything. In a fit of rage, he caused his daughter-in-law Yelena to miscarry and killed his son Ivan Ivanovich, who was coming to his wife's defense, by smacking his head with a scepter, thereby losing his only sound heir. Number 8. Ibrahim of the Ottoman Empire Ibrahim initially lived a life of captivity and barely avoided execution by his ruling brother Murad IV, who killed their four other brothers. Once Murad died, Ibrahim succeeded him and quickly became known for his physical and mental breakdowns, posthumously earning him the nickname Ibrahim the Mad. Ibrahim obsessed over his harem, often influenced by concubines, and gave them excessive gifts like a palace. Disgusted at his ineffectiveness, Ottoman elites killed the Sultan, with his mother's consent. So, as you can imagine, his legacy wasn't great. After his death, a myth circulated that he drowned 280 concubines because they may have slept with other men. Number 7. Henry VIII of England Henry VIII wanted to annul his marriage to his first wife, and the Catholic Church said no. So by putting his foot down and stating the sovereign reigned supreme over the Church of England, he basically founded the Anglican Church. Henry married six times, had numerous affairs and illegitimate children, and executed two of his wives. His second wife, Anne Boleyn, who was the mother of Elizabeth I, and his fifth wife, Catherine Howard. Beyond his affinity for exoricide, Henry had a tendency to overspend. The economy was strong at his reign's outset, however he nearly bankrupted England by blowing state funds on excessive things, such as thousands of needless tapestries and pistols. Number 6. Zhu Huzhao of China Known as the Zhengdi Emperor, Zhu Huzhao didn't want to rule. Zhengdi became emperor at 14 and quickly took to a life of luxury and womanizing. Outside of Beijing, Zhengdi blew state funds on creating palaces for exotic zoos and then converting them into harems. Many women died there due to living conditions and the lack of food provided. He notoriously made royal officials pretend to be market vendors while he imagined himself shopping like a commoner, and he accidentally burned down his palace with gunpowder. This guy was nuts. Number 5. Charles VI of France in the middle of the Hundred Years' War, Charles VI became king at the tender age of 11 and was a puppet of his manipulative uncles. Charles ousted them at 21. Determined to improve France, he earned the nickname Charles the Beloved. By 1392, he began suffering bouts of insanity, killing his own knights, running wildly into forests, kicking Jews out of the kingdom, and signing the Treaty of Troyes, which recognized English King Henry V as his successor. Is it any wonder he was later dubbed Charles the Mad? Number 4. Joanna of Castile Joanna married King Philip the Handsome in 1506. While their marriage started passionately, 
Philip had numerous affairs, causing her constant paranoia about her husband's infidelities. Once Philip died, Joanna allegedly wouldn't let women come near his corpse, including nuns. Her son Charles had his mother confined to a convent in Tordesillas, largely as a power play to consolidate his rule. However, Joanna's paranoia got the best of her, and she believed the nuns conspired to murder her. The Queen of Castile and Aragon tragically died in confinement and earned the moniker Joanna the Mad. Tal vez olvidaré tu nombre, pero jamás el abrazo que me hacía gemir de placer. Number 3. Nero of the Roman Empire In the year 64 AD, a fire raged through Rome for five days. Legend suggests that Nero simply played his fiddle as Rome burned. <laughs> Burn Rome! Burn! Ancient historians accuse Nero of arson to make way for a palace, though Christians were blamed. In time enough, they'll unite against the Caesars, but not in my time. Not a fan of Christianity, it's rumored Nero created Christian candles by dipping followers in oil and lighting them on fire. He competed in the 67 Greek Olympics, was injured in a chariot race, and bombed at acting. But judges let him win. And why not? Nero mass-executed people, including his mother and at least one of his wives. We'd probably let him win, too. My head is splitting. The wine last night, the music. <laughs> the delicious debauchery. Number 2. Caligula of the Roman Empire Caligula was sexually perverse and viciously cruel. Amateur. Indiscriminately executing family and friends, he overcompensated, vied to be worshipped as a god, and then built the largest boat as a personal floating palace. After an oracle alleged Caligula was as likely to become emperor as to ride a horse on the Bay of Bailly, the emperor blew funds on a pontoon bridge for the bay and rode his horse Inkitatus across, while sporting Alexander the Great's breastplate. Hail the most honorable Incitatus! Ancient historians say he wanted to appoint Inkitatus as consul and later made him a priest. Caligula was eventually assassinated. Ah! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number 1. Vlad III of Wallachia Vlad Dracula was a hostage of the Ottoman Empire as a teenager. Once in charge of the region of Romania known as Wallachia, he vowed revenge. He really was um, a, a vicious, extraordinarily cruel, but extremely successful leader. Refusing tribute to an Ottoman envoy under the premise that they declined to respectfully remove their hats, Vlad had their turbans nailed to their heads. These were the first of his eventual 100,000 victims. Vlad's tactics became increasingly brutal, as Ottoman armies found forests of their comrades skewered on wooden pikes, earning him the moniker Vlad the Impaler. His name and notoriety was such that it served as inspiration for Count Dracula. I am Dracula. And I bid you welcome, Mr. Harko, to my house. Do you agree with our list? They must be mad. I don't know what else to do to provoke them. Who do you think is the most insane ruler in history? Swift to all sides friends. For more excellent top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Rome will be destroyed when I die. Why not when I live and can see it? <laughs> and enjoy it.